Okay, so I haven't made videos for a day or two. I've been working on uh, something instead. And uh, I've also been trying to redo uh, the website a little bit. But the, the, um, the video I'm going to show you now is part of our project finance column. I kind of made these into columns. So there's a featured project finance, there's building project finance, there's something m most important, which is advanced project finances, circular references, which primarily apply to project finance, and there's something other I threw in there. Okay. In the building project finance, I think I've shown you this before, and I apologize if it's a slow... Uh, introduction to this video, but you can find a sculpting uh, course. Now, for when I started this one out, frankly, it was months ago, I thought this wouldn't be so hard. Let's just go through some basic sculpting and there are little things here and there. Now, I think between letter of credit fees, between really getting the DS R A correct. Let's have a misspelling here. Um, and between uh, um, circular references associated with taxes that we all knew about, um, there are some real difficulties. And the final one is this idea that the debt service reserve account. This is such an exciting topic. The debt service reserve account should be adjusted for the change in the debt service uh, uh, I'm sorry, the debt service coverage ratio let's put some interest income in this one excuse me for oh crap uh, uh, the debts, I'm going to put a 0.2% uh, uh, interest income the debt service reserve coverage ratio, that's what I meant to say, is, um, in theory, the question is, if you have some change in this debt service reserve account, because it goes up, or more importantly, it, at the very end of the uh, project, it gets paid off, should your debt service coverage ratio, your cash flow for your debt service coverage ratio reflect uh, uh, movements and cash flow you're either having to take out of your cash, your cash flow cash, you're having to take out of your pocket, pocket or cash you're having to put back into your pocket should the DSCR reflect that and I wanted to make arguments that it should not, but they're wrong, probably. Because that's cash flow that's, that's really there. And it's not cash flow that's on the balance sheet. It's the change in the debt service reserve account. It's kind of like the change in the maintenance uh, reserve account. Now, when you do that... I think it's it's fair to say that this could be called the nightmare of, of circular references. When you think about it, well, the cash flow is affected by the DSRA, the DSRA is affected by the debt, the debt, uh, uh, the, the debt drives, of course, the DSRA, and, and then you have a, 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 a different change in the DSRA at the very end and I thought this was already and I've tried this different ways and I thought this was one of the things that was really difficult to compute. Now I've tried it with copy and paste methods and I can't get it and this is what I'm going to show you here is that if you combine you've got to combine, you've got to take account of some mathematics here and not just run into your programs because I had somebody in New York about seven years ago who told me I'm full of crap as a, as a uh, lecturer because I didn't, I didn't uh, uh, account for this change in the debt service reserve account in the analysis. Now, um, 
Okay, so let's go on. The uh, to do this, it's the prior video I had. We computed this thing called the. We computed the present value of the changes. No, we didn't. We we just yes, we did. I computed the present value of the debt service reserve account. Now this is a little trickier. You do almost the same idea. And when you combine a formula, I'm going to have to say this about five times. When you combine a formula with a function, you can suddenly solve this problem that seems just so incredibly difficult really uh, uh, to handle. Again, changes in the DSRA should, in theory, be part of the debt service coverage ratio, which goes into the sculpting and then has a nightmare circular reference. And if you do it with equations, rather than trying to brute force some kind of copy-paste thing, you can start to get it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I put a exercise here for you and in the exercise I've taken the prior kind of exercise that we did that had all these tax adjustments, I interest during construction and letter of credit fees and everything else in it and you know whether we use the DS the the, the LLCR the to to size the debt from the debt to capital ratio. We have all of this stuff in there in there. But this last nightmare thing. So the first thing to do is this. Um, this is the I, I started with uh, kind of. Let's let's make it a six months. No, I'll make it twelve months. We'll make it a twelve months debt service reserve account. So the first thing you can do when this is is you uh, press F4 and Shift Control R because I've got the generic uh, macros open. Okay. Please try to use that on somebody. Now, if we want to figure out the, the required balance, we put offset. And then we go up to the target debt service. This is how much our DSRA should be. And then we can stay on the row and move one column forward and then make it one height and the width up. Oh, Sorry about this. I have a different computer, so I'm going to have to put my dot collar. Uh, uh, this one, and watch me uh, get all confused now. And one, and this is going to be hard to do. And the height is one, and the width is this. Now, when we do that, we get a value. What we have to do is sum all of this, and then it'll be fine. Okay? Shift Control R. That's the required debt service. Now, I did that also for a, a, a little thing. And we can also put if the, if this is, uh, if this one is greater than zero, we'll put that. Now, if it's, oops, see? Uh, sorry about that. And then we can multiply that by 1, since we'll get a false at the end. I'm just being a little lazy. If you don't know that, don't worry. Uh, we'll take the difference in this, and that's our change in the debt service reserve account. And the big change, of course, comes at the very, very end. Now, I have some growth in cash flows. I have some growth in cash flows. And the growth in cash flows up here down here, that's causing the, the, the debt service to go up, which is causing the debt service reserve account to go up. Now, here's one of the other tricks. Then you take the, uh, uh, the change in the debt service reserve account, and I suppose I have to go down. It's not that much of an accident because our target debt service coverage might come from other places, but we to to get this to reflect the uh, uh, a correct DSCR, you have to divide it by that. Okay, that wasn't a fantastic explanation. Now let's put some product and take all of this stuff and divide that by the interest rate index that I've done. A whole lot, so you know, and that gives us our 
present value of the debt service reserve account. Now, just to make things even more horrible, we have this whole sculpting program where we did exactly the same things. And this time, for once, I'm not going to take you through that, but I do have the present value. See, the very last one is the present value of the debt service reserve account. And there's a circular reference. And I, this is such a massive kind of oof, difficult thing that the, I'm just going to say take this one and and the other thing is I'm going to put a minus sign on this. I'm going to reverse the sign. Okay, that's the present value of that. Now, the big trick to doing this, the big trick to doing this is that that, instead of including all that in your regular old sculpting formula, I suggest doing the following. When you get down to the sculpting, first, add this as a uh, separate item. So the debt goes up by this. And then when you do the sculpting, take the target debt service, and we can call that target debt service without fees and without change in DSRA. It's such, I find that you have to do this in two parts. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody will come up with a better method. I think this is an incredibly difficult problem. And I think it's solved. Now, once you have that, then you put this uh, change in the debt service reserve account separately as a, an additional uh, re debt repayment. And when you go across to the end, ah, it went to zero. Trust me, you know, I would suggest going through this little simple example a couple times first before you uh, 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 try this one. Okay, and then um, uh, then we're finished. And then if you go down all the way to the bottom, you know, I have this test. Look, I put a bunch of zeros in the decimal and we, we look at the cash flow available for debt service, put the change in the debt service reserve account and come up with an adjusted cash flow available for debt service reserve account. The repayment includes that little adjustment we made and then we have the interest and if we have some fees and then we get this. If you don't think it'll work, you're probably right the first time now. I think it's fascinating to kind of see Oops. How this works in uh, just a minute. I'm going to go to my original one. Okay, so I don't know what, what I did here. Um, okay. Uh, when I completed this exercise, I think I made a mistake. Because um, I'm not going to redo this video for once. The, the you know, we can see, well, let's, does this DSCR, DSCRA really have much of an effect? It went from 19 to 13. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this equity IRR. Okay. I sh you know, in case your eyes didn't go over that. And then if we put, let's say, a 1.3 times coverage, and then we'll be just constrained by our debt to capital then it makes much less of a difference. These are such subtle and such interesting questions. If we make it like this, then we're back to the... Uh, so we got much lower... Uh, 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 whatever. Um, okay, so I don't know. I'm just messing around here now. But when you you can kind of test it all out. And I think it all works, and there's no circular reference, there's no copy and paste, there's no... Um, there's no uh, enormous blowing up of the model just because of this, which has happened when I've tried it before. So 
Uh, this is, I'm going to stop this video, but I think it's a big deal. And you can uh, try to work through it. You can look at the function that I have over here. And the function uh, just works through the... It's just got a prior function. And I, just to restate, I am changing my philosophy on functions and suggest that if you had a bunch of copy and paste things in, where you copy and paste entire rows. You know, if you were doing those copy and paste things like copying and pasting the C fads or C F A D S or whatever you call it, you know, do make the function put the output all the way across. That's a big change. For me, working through some of these exercises uh, uh, is the only way to really get it. Now, you can say this is a waste of time, I can do it, and I've got a big model to do, I don't have enough time to do this, but then you say that, what the hell, bye.